Hey guys, World of Five here with episode number 16 of the West Ham crew mode. This is the penultimate episode of this season. Season 1 has come at us pretty quickly. Um, we have gotten through it this season. We've gone through it all. The lowest of lows, these losing streaks, these embarrassing... Six goal, six nil defeats. We also had a seven nil victory against Brentford. So we've had the highs of highs, the lowest of lows. And right now we are pushing in these final stages for some conference league football. Obviously, it all does depend on the cup winners as well. Um, but right now we just got to get league position. If we can scratch seventh. In the league, I think that should just secure it for us. You know, I've got I've got faith that it will secure it for us. But coming into this one against Liverpool, we've already played them twice this month, and we've already beaten them twice this month. One at home, one away. This one is at the London Stadium, and 28 minutes into the game, Tammy Abraham scores again this season. He is potentially on for breaking the Erling Haaland record, 36 goals in the Premier League. He is, um, I think that was number 33 of this campaign. He's still got Luton, his Palace and Man City. So imagine if he breaks it at, uh, at the Etihad, I think, on the final day against City. He drops it on Haaland's head, breaks his record after only one year when it stood for quite a few years. Um... But yeah, we're still wandering up here against Liverpool. We have seemed to have their number when it comes to playing them. Klopp just can't seem to get the better of us, obviously. Beginning of the season, yeah, he beat us 6-2, but that was different, you know. Now, we are evolved. We've adapted to the Premier League lifestyle. And we're 2-0 up here against Liverpool. You know, we have beaten them three times. He's beaten us once this season. We have beaten him three times, well, potentially three times if things stay as they are, but yeah, we have got the better of him this season, yeah, he, he obviously had the six goals in one game against us and whatnot, but we have got the better of him overall, and you know, I'll, I'll die on that hill, but this game is important for us because I wanted to try and get, I said at the end of the previous episode, nine points this and uh, in the past in the next five games Chelsea Liverpool Luton Palace and City were our last five games if I could get nine points out of that I thought we might be able to get European football we picked up points in this one which was really really good we then got Luton Palace and City left if we can win Another two games and get potentially 12 points out of those games. That will be a really, really positive one for us. I'm sorry, and Chelsea, sorry. Um, so if we can get a possible 12 points out of Liverpool, Chelsea, Luton and Palace. And then if, if I feel like we, you know, even on this fine run of form... We could probably lose to City. You know, it's just it's City. But yeah, if we can get 12 out of a possible 15 points in our final five games, that would be brilliant. We've just picked up the first three there against Liverpool. Next up, we've got Chelsea in the league. But before that, the semi-final against Bayer Leverkusen in the Europa League. Big game here. Obviously, Antonio is considering retirement. He's signed a contract to join Al Hilal. So they'd probably be pretty pissed off if he did retire before even playing for them. But a very early goal from Leverkusen. They have very similar to Atalanta, a, a very, very attacking three back. And unlike Atalanta, um, who have their wingers pushed all the way up, the wingers for uh, Leverkusen, they act more like wing backs. And they are very, very, very good at tracking back and... It's very difficult to break them down. A lot of our chances, you can see, are coming from the corner. From the corner? From corners. Ben Rama, shot blocked. 
just trying to find a path, but you can see, look how compact and difficult it is just to find a bit of space. Thankfully, Saeed Ben Rama is there to tuck the ball into the back of the net. And obviously, this year we've had a lot of problems with, uh, with fitness and with kind of all of that squad rotation. I probably sold too many players in the windows. But, you know, the summer windows coming up, we can sign some good rotational players. I don't really think we need too much in terms of the first team. I think we've kind of found a solid base. We just need to sprinkle on a few more players here or there, just to solidify the whole team in general. But it's probably mainly going to be rotational younger players um, that can help us in Europe and in the cup competitions should we get Europe. Obviously, you know, we can get it through winning the Europa League, but that would be the Champions League, and we're not quite good enough for the Champions League just yet, but we are 3-1 up here against Leverkusen. Jared Bowen, the captain for this season, puts us 3-1 to the good, and a nice, solid lead taking us into Dubai Arena in Germany for the second leg. I think it's a nice, solid one to stand on. They obviously are a very attacking team, so we are going to be wary of the fact that they can probably outscore us. I think they're one of the maybe few teams we've come up against in the Europa League who can outscore us. You can see there some great saves from Georgie. He needs to be on top of his game if we want to progress through to the next round. But 3-1 in the first leg. Very impressive performance against Xabi Alonso's Bayer Leverkusen. We take that. We definitely take that. And as for the second leg, that is going to be after this little interruption because we are playing at Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. We beat them right at the beginning of the season. They were the first big sixth club that we did beat. And if we can do the same here today, do the double over Chelsea, that would be really good for us in terms of our league position because we have, since Christmas, since we kind of bumped it down to Legendary, I've actually bumped it back up to ultimate um these past two maybe three episodes i've bumped it back up to ultimate difficulty um and you haven't really been able to tell because i've i think well you can tell for some games especially that wolves game um in the previous episode i think it was wolves they beat us 4-1 but for the most part you can't really tell that we are playing on ultimate difficulty or legendary. So I think that's good. That's a positive sign. We've kind of found our form on ultimate. We can now beat some of the bigger teams like Liverpool. But we are still obviously going to struggle against others. And one percent got really unfortunate there. Tackled his man nice and clean. Tried to play it out from the back. Played it straight into the path of the Chelsea player. And they level the game at 1-1. But you can see just how tired some of our players are. And this is this is only 45 minutes into the game. So rotation is a much needed asset that we need next season. A lot of rotational players or even first team players that can turn the players into first team into rotation. And you get what I'm saying. But Paqueta does put us back in front in this one. And then just after the hour mark, Juan Bissaka down his right-hand side, finds Ward-Prowse. He finds Paqueta. Paqueta finds Ben Rahman. Nice quick pass in. Great shot. Forces a save. And it is going to result in a corner. Whipped in by Ward-Prowse. On the head of Alvarez. Good first block. Aguerd shot blocked. Tilo Kera. He finds Jared Bowen. He shoots. And he finds that top left-hand corner with a beautiful little volley. Captain fantastic for this season he has been just that he has been absolutely fantastic 3-1 is the final score against Chelsea very similar to the 3-1 against Liverpool so it's back-to-back -back wins in games I really didn't think we were going to win in six points from the, f the 15 points for the uh, final five games we wanted to get nine at least we've already got six so that 12 is definitely on, especially against Luton and Crystal Palace. But into the second leg here against Leverkusen. We're 3-1 to the good. We've come into their stadium. It's absolutely packed. It's booming. Poor tackle there. Allows Hoffman through. We're just kind of trying to force him out wide again. He mugs us off. Hoffman whips it to the back post. Grimaldo is there. 38 minutes into the game. 
they take the lead on the night and they close the aggregate score to just one goal between us. Ten minutes into the second half, our former player, Corne, Maxwell Corne, he is intercepted. We pass it though straight to Ben Yedda who is wriggling and raggling and just untackleable at this point. Heath Lane plays it to Hoffman who we've been struggling with all game. We're going to continue to do that because Florian Verts' shot is blocked. We try and clear it. Schick is there. He shoots, he scores, and just before the hour mark, they double their lead on the night. They completely close the aggregate scoreline. It is now 3-3. Three, three. We are tied on aggregate until five minutes after they bring it back. Jarrah Bowen is there. He is the man. He restores our aggregate advantage. Can we hold on? Less than half an hour remaining. Can we hold on to this? You know, we're losing on the night, but we are through as it stands to the final of the Europa League on aggregate. Nice attempt there by Tammy, but it's intercepted by John Stones, and he is just going to run at us. He finds Hoffman. Good tackle by Alvarez, but it falls straight back to John Stones, and he's just going to charge down this wing. Walker Peters can't keep up. He is absolutely shattered. Takes him up with Stones. He is just resilient. He gets right back up, runs down the byline, plays it inside to Florian Verts. Great save from Georgie. No one's tracking the run there. Ben Yedda makes it 3-1. We are tied once again on aggregate 4-4 four, four is the scoreline. We play inside to Ben Rama. He curls one just wide of the post. You can see how tired our players are starting to get in comparison to the Leverkusen players. And the players for our team that aren't as tired, you know, they're second second teamers. And David Kuzner definitely taking advantage of that. Schick, not tightly marked enough. He goes for the audacious bicycle kick. 4-1 on the night. 5-4 on aggregate. And I think you know how this is going to end. We've come to Germany and we are sent home disappointed because the final nail in the coffin is a schick third goal the hat trick secured a thunderbolt from outside the box and we go home empty-handed Leverkusen go to the Europa League final we were so confident after that 3-1 but I said the attacking intent and the defensive stability of this Leverkusen team it was always going to be difficult to break them down and that is what happened three goals for Patrick Schick five goals on the night for Bayer Leverkusen six four on aggregate between the two teams and unfortunately we are knocked out of the Europa League so our only chance of getting Europe is now in the league we have four more three more games in the next episode to try and secure it but I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. If you have, please like, subscribe, and peace.